Hello everyone, this is RaySpace here with a more theoretical video about space technology as opposed to my regular uh, gameplay videos in Kerbal Space Program implementing space technology. And this comes by way of an email from Giancarlo Aguero about centrifugal nuclear th thermal propulsion. So I'm going to try to explain this even though I'm not an expert on it by any means. Uh, but the question is whether we want to use this in some of our space endeavors or not in Kerbal Space Program. I'm not gonna, you know, determine this for reality here, but should I make this a part and is this worthwhile? And that's what we're analyzing. I'm just confining it to that. So this page is basically all I know about it, but I found another uh, paper and I'm going to go ahead and go over that paper live and so I'll go through it and you'll see how I go through a scientific paper like this and try to analyze what it's telling me. But let's get the basics down first. So we have this centrifugal nuclear thermal propulsion system. And just by the name, you know that it's going to be trying to move something to the edge of something by rotating it because that's what centrifugal is. So it's an advanced propulsion concept engine which utilizes a bubble through nuclear reactor. I'm not entirely sure about that phrasing, but uh, to directly heat the propellant. Directly heat the propellant is something uh, a little bit worrisome when it comes to nuclear because we really want closed cycle nuclear engines that don't spew out the nuclear fuel. And when you say directly heat, that makes me worry that some of the nuclear fuel is going to be getting into the propellant. The propellant is definitely what we're going to be shooting out the back. What we don't want is to shoot the nuclear fuel in the reactor out the back. That's the radioactive stuff. So we, we need an answer to exactly how much possibility there is that the nuclear fuel is going to be actually getting out if we say directly heat. Hopefully it's not so direct. So we have the liquid fuel, that's the liquid nuclear fuel. So it's a liquid reactor. There are three types of reactor basically. It is solid, liquid, and gas. The solid ones are the nuclear thermal propulsion systems that people are most familiar with, like NERVA or Timberwind. NERVA had a solid core and got about 900 seconds of ISP. Timberwind had pebble bed cores, so the, the reactor fuel is sort of like in a pebble form, which increases the surface area and that leads it to be able to convey the heat better and that got a little bit more efficiency about a thousand seconds of ISP. This one is uh, going for a thousand six hundred and five with hydrogen so that's the compare I mean, it, all of these are with hydrogen as far as I'm concerned though it says theoretical performance of thousand eight hundred here. So it's a liquid core though as opposed to solid core which is why there's more chance of it getting out. Uh, so we don't want the radioactive stuff getting out so we need to see how it all works. Uh, this image doesn't super duper tell me but it, it looks like it's well contained, right? Um, but it doesn't give me enough even to model what this rotating core is going to look like. And most of the information here, it's got good numbers, but the words don't tell me anything more about the Im implementation of this. It does tell me what the performance is. Now, this manuscript talks about challenges and potentials, so we want to take a look at that. Now, it is a liquid core, so that's what liquid fuel propulsion, propulsion, uh, uh, liquid fuel fission propulsion concept designed to heat propellant to 5,000 Kelvin uh, prior to expansion through a nozzle. So it's very hot. So we're going to have to have some special materials to deal with that. But part of the way they're dealing with that is by rotating the, the liquid fuel so that it, it, it can convey the heat without burning stuff up. Right, uh, it's, part of the rotation is presumably to avoid burning the structure of the stuff, so we don't need uh, as. I mean, there's really no material that can deal with five thousand Kelvin normally, so we would have to come up with something special. It gets the numbers that they said in the other document, and it's talking about trying to do a fast Mars mission with it. That's fine. And 
then we'll need a uh, high assay, low enriched uranium. So one of the drawbacks of some systems is they require highly enriched uranium, which of course can be weapons grade and is very well controlled and we don't want to have too much of that. So having low enriched uranium work with it is a good thing. And it does the history, this is all the history stuff. Um, but let's see, so we've got the Timuwin, see it mentions Timuwin and Nerva as usual. The centrifugal nuclear thermal rocket is a liquid fuel thermal propulsion system designed to heat propellant. Yeah, yeah, we've already went through that in the beginning. Out, okay, so let's see. Reactor configuration is similar to the reactor configuration baseline in the Timberwind program, with the notable exception being the use of liquid fuel. That's important. Contained in rotating fuel cylinders instead of a solid uh, coated particle fuel contained in stationary fuel cylinders. Outside of the fuel cylinders, very similar technologies can be used as operating temperatures would be similar in most other areas of the reactor and engine. Uh, in addition, because a CNTR is designed for in-space use only, power densities within the system will be significantly less than those required by that. Uh, but I didn't realize Timberwind was not supposed to be in-space only, but okay. Um, 19 fuel cylinders, and they will be rotating. Before discussing numerous challenges, oh, let's just skip to the challenges, shall we? So when we take a look at the challenges here, it says the primary challenges of CNTR are all associated with the fuel elements. These include heat transfer and fluid flow within the cylinders, drive mechanisms required for startup, steady state operation and shutdown, uranium retention and or recapture. Yes, that's mostly what I'm interested in. Uranium fuel makeup if needed during operation and ensuring adequate compatibility with uh, the, the rest of it. Yeah, the main thing is uranium retention for me and the problem is as far as I can tell they are rotating the fuel in order to avoid it touching the propellant and that allows it to convey as much heat as possible we need that to all stay very stable otherwise if there's any turbulence in this system some of the nuclear fuel could get into the propellant then they they have the recapture thing. Anytime you're going to have to think about recapturing the uranium makes me worried. So that is that is the sum total of it. Now they go into their model and they their model here assumes that the whole thing is stationary, mixing which would likely result from the high velocity hydrogen bubbles moving through the liquid uranium was neglected. Okay, uh, well, I mean, but, but it's stationary, so you can't do that. You can't figure out whether this all stays safe. Um, and when it's stationary, you can't convey the same amount of heat to the propellant. So the temperature increase in the propellant is only on the order of 2,500 Kelvin, and the total propellant temperature of 3,500 Kelvin versus the target of 5,000. So this is the fuel element cross-section. What we see is the hydrogen bubbles in the middle, and then molten uranium. And I have to admit, they sure seem like they're in close contact. <laughs> right? So, so this, is, this is my question with the centrifugal nuclear thermal propulsion. Um... If we're going to spew out the the nuclear fuel, wouldn't I just want one of the obviously dirtier ones that get much better performance? Why would I want this? Is the question. It seems on the whole not containing the nu nuclear fuel bit to be riskier than... I mean, it's easier to implement than the nuclear light bulb. But... It also seems like it's more likely to have a containment issue, which people are going to object to. But if you're willing to spew out the... I mean, the thing is, if you're willing to spew out the uranium, then do you really want just 1,600 seconds of ISP? And my answer to that is generally no. So 
I don't know about the scene. The problem here with this paper and with all the stuff that I've seen is it doesn't tell me how much we might be likely to lose. How much of the nuclear fuel can get out? How much radiation? It's so interested in modeling the performance of it. And most of this after that little mention is mentioning the performance of it. It doesn't really deal with my question. But let, let's, let's take a look at this steady state operation and shutdown thing. And let's talk about the mechanisms. It is necessary to start rotating the fuel tubes before the uranium goes through the solid to liquid phase change. When the uranium fuel is in solid metallic form, it is not possible for hydrogen to flow through, of course, um, to reach the center exhaust region of the alnear fuel. Therefore, an alternative method of rotating the tubes is needed during the solid phase conditions. Yeah, this is all talking about the practical implementation of it. But may maybe the answer to my question is so obvious they didn't even think to mention it. Maybe it obviously is the case that the propellant cannot carry any of the nuclear fuel out. The problem is they're not telling me that. <laughs> at nowhere, nowhere in this document... See, when, when you look at a scientific document, you need to have an idea of what you're looking for, what, what, what answers you're looking for. And I have one thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for whether this system is going to be able to keep the propellant the new, not the propellant, the nuclear fuel in. And what the risks regarding that are. But this is not what, this has no information on that. Here is another paper addressing challenges to engineering feasibility of the centrifugal nuclear thermal rocket. And so here it says, Definition of key parameters which allows integration of the results of various analyses and reviews strategies to mitigate the problem of uranium vapor saturating the propellant exhaust in significantly impacting the CNTR specific impulse. Well, you know, the problem with uranium vapor saturating the propellant exhaust is not really the impact of on the specific impulse, though, of course, it would impact a specific impulse if you're... Remember, the reason why hydrogen is so good is because it's light. So if you have a lot of uranium going into the exhaust, uranium is really heavy, which slows down the hydrogen. So they're going like, oh, well, the problem is the uranium vapor saturating the propellant exhaust significantly impacts the impacting the specific impulse. Now, I understand, you know, if it's in the middle of space, space is really radioactive all the time anyway. We you got a lot of radioactivity in space. So maybe they're figuring, well, if it's going to be used really far in space, it doesn't matter that we're spewing uranium all the time. But what, what this looks like is that we're going to be spewing the uranium, right? And mainly they're trying to mitigate that to get better specific impulse. Now, why is it a problem if it's going to be spewing the uranium? You can't really test it around here. You need to go really far out. You're going to have to be in space to test it. And it's a complicated system to deal with. So if you can only test it in space, that's rough. Anyway, I can't access this full paper. So that's the problem. The problem is, it seems like we're going to get uranium vapor in our propellant. And if I'm going to get uranium vapor in my propellant, and so it's an open cycle liquid core engine, in other words, then I'm going to want more specific impulse than 1,600 seconds of ISP. I want, I want more than that, because there are options to have open cycle ones, which are spewing out the uranium anyway, that will get more than 1,600 seconds of ISP. So that's my understanding of the centrifugal nuclear thermal rocket. I'm not sold on it, um, but I would certainly make a model of it if I knew what one would practically... I assume that it's just going to be like 
a, a solid core like this and then a nozzle. And then that's it. Uh, but I don't know what else there might be. So it could look very simple like that, basically just like uh, another Nerva. But now, still wondering what to make of it. So that that's it's sort of a reaction video, a reaction video to centrifugal nuclear thermal propulsion. It's not a reaction video to somebody playing a game. It's a reaction video to scientists trying to come up with new nuclear systems. But here we are. So tell me your thoughts about the CNTR and whether you think it might be useful. Maybe I've got something wrong here. I certainly, I mean, there's limited number of resources on the topic, so I certainly could be wrong about stuff. And the more I know, the more I can assess whether it's a good thing to use for our space missions. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.